Hi everyone, it is the next part of analysis in pile bearing capacity, which is the next element in determining the ultimate pile bearing capacity is frictional resistance. Okay, remember, sometimes we are using the term of frictional resistance. Okay, sometimes uh, we are using the term of shock resistance. And uh, sometimes also we are using the skin resistance. Okay, skin resistant, shock friction, uh, it's same. Okay, so sometimes we are using the uh, symbol of QUS, uh, sometimes we are using the QS, so it a uh, same meaning. As usual, in determining the pile bearing capacity, we need to consider the condition of soil or we need to consider the type of soil itself. In this type of soil conditions, which is sand, we are using two type of equations or two type of method. Okay, the first one is general, the second one is Coyle and Castello. So, let's we go to the first part of uh, determining the QS in sand. Okay, this is the general method that we need to use in calculating the shaft resistance or skin friction. Okay. Uh, okay, as you can see here, this is the general equations that we use for all method. Okay, the difference is in determining the value of F, which is the value of F is the factor of friction, the friction factor. Okay, so uh, as you can see here, in determining the F, we are using two different equations uh, based on the location of the pile okay the pile length itself okay for the z z is our depth okay for z from the surface zero to l prime which is the location of l prime is here l prime is the point which is uh, the zero until the point that the very uh what we consider it as a sudden changes of decreasing okay so after its standard value for a certain depth or until the l there is the l so we consider the f as a fz is or equal to l prime Okay, uh, after this, we can go to the example. Okay, so in order to determine the 0 to L prime, we are using the equation of K times to sigma prime naught tangent delta prime, which is the sigma prime naught is the effective vertical stress at depth under considerations. And then the delta prime is the solved pile friction angle in the range of 0 0.5 to 0 0.8 feet okay so there is the k value or the k naught value we can use the k effective earth pressure coefficients we are using for bore or jet pile type we are using the equation 1 minus sine phi for low displacement driven K naught is equal to 1 minus sine phi to 1.4 K naught. It's based on the condition given in the equations or in the side. Okay. Meanwhile, for uh, research, pet, research by Manso Hunter indicate that the K value for H file, H file is the shape of the piling. Okay. It's equal to 1.65. And meanwhile, for steel pipe pile, K is equal to 1.26. And the precast concrete pile is equal to 1.5. Okay. So, for the next uh, method that we can use in calculating the shaft friction, we are using the Coyle and Castello. Okay. Coyle and Castello. Okay. Uh, in determining, as I, as I mentioned before, the difference is in determining the F value, okay? The friction factor value, 
Okay, there is your P is your parameter. Remember, this one is your parameter. Since in piling, when the soil is interact with the perimeter. Okay, perimeter of a uh, pile. Okay, so we consider is a perimeter. And there is the pile length. Okay, so in order to determine the F average, okay, we are using the same equation as a previous general method. Okay, there is how to determine the average of F. Okay, and then, but remember, you can see here, there is the average effective overburden pressure. Okay, if you have a multiple layer, so you need to consider the average overburden pressure. Okay, not only a single, uh, over a uh, single effective pressure. Okay, so in determining the k value, you can refer this type of graph. Okay, so there is the k value. The x axis your k value. The y axis your embankment ratio that you need to refer. The L over D here, and then you need to have the value of V. Let's say L over D, your ratio value is 10 here, and then your V value is 32. There is your 32. So your K value should be around here 1, 1.5, around 1.5. So your k is equal 1.4. After you get the k value, substitute here, and then the sigma get from the average uh, effective overburden pressure, and then we fix that our delta prime is equal to 0 0.8 phi. Same goes to this one. Okay, this is the range, but in Coy and Castello, we assume the maximum one 0 0.8 times to phi value, there is a parameter, maybe it can be pi d, maybe it can be, it depends on the, on the type, uh, the shape of the pi foundation that you use, and then there is the pi length. Okay, the next is, uh, in analy analyzing the shaft friction in clay soil conditions. In clay soil conditions, we have three methods uh, that we cover in this syllabus, which is the first one is lambda, okay, the lambda method, the second one is alpha method, and the third one is beta method. Okay, we go to the lambda method first. This lambda method, we still use the general equation for QS, which is P times to L times to F average. As I mentioned before, in calculating the QS, the difference is the way how we determine the F average or F value. Okay, in this lambda method, the equations to determine the F average is using the lambda as a factor. Okay, this is lambda for the factor. Okay, the lambda times to the sigma prime theta plus 2 cu okay which is in determining the sigma prime naught the average of sigma prime naughts we need to determine the area of the uh, soil that uh, react to the pile foundations okay let's say as you can see here okay uh, there is our pile okay there is our pile and then we consider it will go to the distribution of stress will go to like this one okay so this is our point of l prime actually okay so we have three layer of this uh example okay three layer of soil we have a layer uh layer one layer two and layer three Okay, and then in determining the sigma prime, we need to determine the area of layer 1, the layer of area 2, 
This means that we need to cal calculate the area in terms of trapezoidal and this one also the trapezoidal, this is the triangle equation. Okay, so we get the sigma prime. Okay, in order to determine the lambda, we can use this type of table, which is you need to refer the embedment length, means that the pile length, this is our pile length. Okay, so let's say your pi line is 20, so there is your factor for lambda. But if the value is not indicated in this table, let's say 12, you need to do the interpolation. Okay, remember interpolation method. Okay, and then uh, in determining the CU, you need to multiply CU1 multiplied to L1. Okay, different layer, different value of C and different uh, pile length. That relate to uh, that layer. Okay, so in order to determine the QS, PLF average, which is the L average, you are using these equations. In determining the sigma, you need to determine the area of the soil interact with the pile foundations. Okay, the next one is alpha method. Yeah, alpha method. Okay, as you can see here, we are using the same equations in general method. In other uh, method that you apply before. Okay, still using the F times to P times to the delta L. Okay, but the difference is in determining the F value. Okay, in this alpha method, we are using the alpha value times to the CU in determining the F value. But in determining the alpha value, we are have five method of five way in determining the alpha value. Okay, for the option one, the way or the method one in determining the alpha based on the Tezagi, you need to determine the ratio of the CU over PA. Which is the PA is our uh, atmospheric pressure and the CU is undrained cohesion value. Okay, as you can see here, you get the ratio value and then you get the alpha value. It's just a simple way or the simple uh, method in determining the alpha. Okay, the second one is Sladen by Sladen, which is the alpha is equal to C, capital C. Not the cohesion value, but this one is the uh, factor for bow pile or driven pile. Okay, so the C times to the ratio of uh, effective pressure, average effective pressure divided by C value, power of zero point four five. Okay, so in determining the C value, there are the range for bow pile. We have a zero point four to zero point five. And if the equation given the driven file, you need to use bigger than 0 0.5 for C value. The sigma, uh, you need to have the average vertical effective stress. And then the CU is the undrained cohesion value. Okay, so for the next option to determine the alpha based on the random, you need to determine the ratio of CU over sigma prime not first. If your ratio is less than or equal to 1, you need to use this formula. But if your ratio of undrained cohesion divided by sigma prime not is bigger than 1, so you need to use power of negative 0.25. The difference is uh, the power of uh, of the equations. Okay, and then the next uh, option is modified by API. The F average is equal to 0 0.5 times to CU times to sigma prime not power of 0 0.5 or you use this one. You need to calculate both but after you get uh, separately uh, for second friction, you need to separately power. Okay, CU power of 0 0.25, stigma not uh, power of 0 0.25. This is 75 and 0.25. So you need to 
compare which is larger, you need to use the larger one value based on the modified API. Okay. Previously, Randolph, we need to use this negative value. But in this modified API, we don't consider the negative value. The last option in determining the alpha value is by Carl's right. Okay, NGI. Okay, Norwegian Geotechnical Institute. Okay, and then this also you need to determine the ratio first. If the ratio is less than or equal to 0 0.25, there is our alpha value in the range. Okay, if your CU or the ratio is equal to 1, your alpha is 0 0.5. And if your ratio is bigger or e bigger is not uh, equal, there is a bigger than 1. So, your alpha is equal here. Which is the C value is same goes to this value. Okay. Okay, the last method in determining the QS in the clay soil we are using F is equal to beta times the sigma prime naught. Okay. The general equation is same but the difference is in determining the F value. Okay. So is in it in clay itself we have two conditions you need to consider in determining the beta value. Okay. For normal consolidated clay the beta value is equal to k k times to tangent phi prime r. And then, the difference in determining the beta is how to determine the k value. Okay, there is the equation for k value. There is the full equation in determining the f value. Okay, but the difference is how to determine the k value. Okay, you need to determine or you need to consider the OCR value, over consolidated ratio value, if the over consolidated clay is considered in your equations or in your conditions. Okay, so the difference is in determining the K value in order to determine the beta for beta method. It's just a simple way. Okay, that's all for a method that involves in calculating the shaft friction or skin friction in bile.